Hey everybody, today I wanted to talk about the inner critic. The inner critic, whoa, where do we start? Where do we start? So I'm going to first start with my inner critic and introduce you to her. Her name is Broomhilda. That's her full name. And I have spent the last several years softening the relationship with Broomhilda to a point where it has become a befriending of my inner critic. And it took me some time to get there because my inner critic in the past, oh, wow. Broomhilda has run crazy circles around my mind, ooh, in my heart, in my spirit, in my body, circles of confusion, chaos, constant judging and criticism, uh, and the list goes on and on and on. And so that part of me, the inner critic, when I first became aware of who she was and what she was doing and the havoc and the hell that she was raising in my life, I tried to separate myself from her. I didn't want to pay attention to her. I didn't want to pay her any respect. She was called a bitch. She was called a heifer, a motherfucker, all kinds of stuff. I did everything except own her as a part of me, as I had done with the other seven archetypes. That's right. I have seven archetypes that I use in order to understand myself. I had done everything, banished her, cussed her out, put her in the back, didn't allow her any space, disrespected her, didn't listen to her, all of these things until I started to realize that she was a part of me. Some people may call it the shadow. She is part of that shadow part of me, the parts of me that I don't like that I tried to hide from. And instead of treating her like a full member of my inner council with the other archetypes, treating her as a resource instead of resisting her, until I started doing that around 2006 or seven, um, life inside of me was very combative. And I really began to work with a body worker, shout out to Ken Yamaguchi Clark, uh, in how she was showing up in my body and then what she was trying to tell me and working with bringing her into the fullness of my inner counsel beginning to get to know her, to ask her who she was in my life and what she wanted me to know, stepping outside of the need to resist her and to cuss her out and just, just to call her by her name, Room Hilda. And then honoring her with spending time, not following her advice or her taking action on her comments, but just acknowledging her. I did a lot of journaling. I did some drawing. I even uh, photographed all of my archetypes in my book, That Which Awakens Me. And at different times in the last, what, 17 years since I really began to acknowledge her, I've had photo shoots with, with her and all the other archetypes and including that in, um, in the writing that I do, in the coaching that I do, in the training that I do, um, in my own healing journey of, of being me, thriving mindfully as the real me. So giving her a front seat in, in my life, in the front row with the other archetypes has been a journey and a process. And so fast forward to now, Instead of saying that she's my inner critic, I call her my chief information assistant because what she's doing 
is she wants to call my attention to information, not necessarily information that I choose to use or follow up on. She really wants to know that she is trying to contribute to my life. It may not be in my best interest to follow through. However, I now have some tools in place and a practice in my muscle in dealing with her in communicating mindfully and relating to her mindfully to hear what she's had, what she has to say. And so it starts with asking her, who are you to me and what do you want me to know? And then thanking her. It doesn't mean that I'm going to follow that information, take action on it. It just means that I'm acknowledging her because here's the problem that I've had in the past. When I try to push her away, disregard her, disrespect her, act like what she has to say or who she is in my life doesn't matter, that's when her voice gets louder. That's when the self-judgment, the criticism, all of the chaos, all of it, it just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes and turns into a hurricane in my life. And so nowadays... I do my best to tap into those questions. Who do you want to be in my life? And what is it that you want me to know? And thanking her. And each time that I do that, our relationship is softened. She's not interested in, do I take action? She doesn't keep track of that. She really is just in the moment saying, hey, I've got something to say and I want you to listen to me. Sometimes I listen immediately and other times I'm like, I'm going to have to get back to you on that. Um, But really just making sure that I acknowledge her and what she's trying to do. And I thank her. Those few things have helped me develop a kinder, more gentler relationship with her because in the past I tried to get rid of her I tried to kill her off I tried to murder her you know take her out and I came to a place where I realized that she was a part of me and I needed to look at her and in doing my shadow work over the years and that's a constant thing because Rumi does get loud and she does try to stir up stuff and try to you know get me to go there and sometimes she's success- she is successful However, now I have the capacity to uh, know how to bring myself into a place of calm and dealing with her by asking, hey, what are you trying to tell us? Who do you want to be to us? And treating her like she is a full partner in who I am. So that is... A little bit about my inner critic and I just wanted to share that with you. I want to invite you to take some time to get to know your inner critic. Maybe you just want to ask the question and and allow it to just sit with you so the inner critic can respond whenever. Maybe your inner critic has a name. Maybe your inner critic has um, some, some information to share with you. Maybe your inner critic Uh, wants you to journal. Maybe your inner critic wants you to draw. Whatever it is, maybe your inner critic wants you to just sit and be with, with them. Just take a moment to ask who your inner critic is to you. And then if you're able to, ask your inner critic, what is it that you want me to know? And then I want you to work towards thanking your inner critic. Just go ahead and thank your inner critic. Begin to use those muscles. Drop me a line and let me know how you are doing with your inner critic wherever you find this video. Now, I want to say to you that working with your inner critic is a part of the core commitment in Thriving Mindfully. There's five core commitments commitments, but the third core commitment is share your living. That is looking at mindful 
relationships and communication. And that first relationship is the relationship with yourself. And it is getting to know the parts of you that you like and the parts of you that you don't like. That could include, for example, getting to know your inner critic. I know for myself in practicing the third core commitment of thriving mindfully, this heart-centered approach to being present well and the real me, or for you, it would be the real you, I have over the years and I continue to nurture the relationships that I have with my inner archetypes, my eight parts of myself. I have a wise woman, the ancestor. I have a spiritual woman, Ananda. I have a creative woman, Kiyamsha, which is a Swahili word that means that which awakens me. Ananda is a Sanskrit word that means spirit's eternal bliss or joy that Ananda is my spiritual person, my spiritual woman. Kiyamsha is my creative woman. My inner or little girl is Puff. My COO, Chief Operating Officer woman is Madeline, the name that I was given to at birth. Puff is my nickname from childhood. The peacemaker, is Cheryl, my middle name. The warrior woman is Sapphire. And the inner critic that a lot of people, she used to be the inner critic, but now she's the chief information assistant is Broomy, short for Broomhilda. So those are my, um, my parts of myself, my archetypes that I use to communicate with myself, to relate to myself in mindful ways. If you would like to dive deep into your relationship with yourself and learn how to use the heart-centered approach of thriving mindfully, to be present well in the real you in a coaching relationship with me, go to anandalik.com. All you have to do is schedule a 30-minute discovery call and we can begin to explore how you can embrace thriving mindfully in your life, relationships, and career, and as well as use the five core commitments. The first one is slow your living, all about mindfulness and awareness. The second is sustain your living, all about taking care of yourself with mindful self-care. The third is share your living, which we talked about, the mindful communication and relationship with others, starting first with yourself. The fourth is serve through your living, which is how you share your gifts in the world. And the fifth and final core commitment is savor your living, how you identify and celebrate your small, medium, and big wins in your life on a regular basis. So go to anandalik.com forward slash just anandalik.com. There's no forward slash. I had to remember that to learn more about my Thriving Mindfully approach and coaching program. Thanks so much for tuning in. And I'd love to hear more about your inner critic. All right. See you next time. Bye.